Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a really colorful striped moon and stars shaker card. These are the Waffle Flower products I'll be using today. First up is the moon and stars combo set. It comes with the moon and stars stamp set as well as the moon and stars panel die in the back. I'll create my background using the plaid play stamp set. And I will use the largest die from the rainbows panel die to create my shaker card. I'm going to start by stamping my background. I have a beautiful rainbow of waffle flower colors laid out here and I've grabbed the plaid play stamp set. I'm going to use the third largest stripe stamp from that set. I'm going to mount it on my acrylic block but I'll use the grid on my work surface to help and make sure that that strip is nice and straight when I mount it to my acrylic block. I have my colors arranged in the order I'd like to stamp them. I do that just to make sure I follow my order and I don't get mixed up. I'm starting with a purple which is called Happy Go Lucky. Just going to ink up the stripe and then I'm going to stamp it diagonally. After I stamp this purple stripe, I'm going to move on to my next color. My next color is Safe Choice, a really pretty pink. I'm going to look through my acrylic block and through the stamp itself, making sure that the stamp is slightly overlapping the previously stamped stripe. I do this just to make sure that um, there's no white gaps in between my uh, stripes. The orange is called Oh Happy Day. The yellow was You Said What. This green is Chirp Chirp. The blue here, or kind of aqua color, pool color, is New Fish and Pond, and then I finish up with Daydreaming. So those are the all, the all the colors that I'm using. I'm going to continue stamping this entire panel with my rainbow of colors. If this feels a little too involved for you, you could of course use striped pattern paper instead. I really enjoy stamping these rainbows, so this was a pleasure for me to stamp, but of course if you would rather you can totally use striped pattern paper instead. Now moving on to die cutting. I have an A2 panel of white cardstock here. This is actually a scrap of cardstock, that's why you see the image on the back. I'm lining up the panel with the Moon and Stars panel die, making sure all the edges line up perfectly, then use a little piece of tape to hold the die in place, and then I will run it through my die cutting machine. Just to make sure that the die cut all the way through, I'm rotating it around, so I'm rota rotating it 90 degrees, and now running it through my die cutting machine on its side here. And now you can see that the die pops out, cut perfectly, really wonderful die, and I'm going to peel back the tape and use that little inside section to die cut the moon and stars um, from the moon and stars panel die. So I ran it through the die cutting machine. I'm now going to remove the tape and then pop out my die cuts. The strip of stars here is a, has some very thin uh, sections of cardstock or thin cuts. So I'm going to pop those out first and then I'll start to pop out the stars and the, the top strip. You can see how beautiful that die cut. I love the really thin intricate details on that die. So I have two pieces of white craft foam here, and I have the rainbow panel die. I'm going to take this frame from the rainbow panel die and die cut um, this craft foam with the frame. I'm going to cut it twice, so I'll have two frames when I'm done. I'm using my cuddle bug here because I found that my cuddle bug, I like how it cuts my craft foam. It doesn't smush it very much, and, uh, it, and it cuts all the way through. So I really like using my cuddle bug for craft foam. I'd also like to point out that I'm not removing the inside part from the die cut once I die cut it out. So I'm, you can see I'm leaving that interior rectangle inside these frames. This keeps the frame nice and square because the um, craft foam frame is actually very thin and if I were to remove the inside part, I might not have nice perfect straight edges anymore. I just glued the two frames together making sure that the glue is only on the frame part and not in that interior section of craft foam. We'll remove that interior section later once the glue is dried a bit. Now moving on to stamping my sentiment. I pulled a sentiment off from the Moon and Stars stamp set and I mounted it right in that middle section of the Moon and Stars die cut 
and the sentiment says twinkle twinkle little star do you know how loved you are which is I think perfect for a welcome baby card and I put some anti-static powder down because I'm going to do some heat embossing I inked up the in, the sentiment in Versamark stamped it once now I'm inking it up again in Versamark ink and stamping it a second time I think this is the key to getting really nice thick embossing the only thing is you want to make sure when you're stamping it a second time that it is lined up perfectly and that you don't press too hard because you don't want to um, get the ink to smoosh out from the stamp and then you have kind of a blurry sentiment. I poured on some silver embossing powder and then heat set that. Now I'm going to take the moon here. So this is the moon die cut and I am inking it up all over in the Versamark ink. I'm going to heat emboss this in silver as well. So once I get the die cut completely covered with Versamark ink, I'm now going to carefully dip it in the silver embossing powder. I'm kind of moving my hands around here. I tried to use tweezers, but I found that my hands were just a little bit easier to do this. And I'll kind of, when I, when I do heat set this, because you want to be careful because that heat gun can get really hot. When I heat set this, I will heat up to it just to where my fingertips are and then stop and then heat set the other half. So you just want to be careful of that. And I am also making sure that I get some of that embossing powder on the sides a little bit of the die cut. I just, when I, when you have a side view of this card, I want it to look completely silver and not look white. So here you can see I'm stopping, I'm going to dip the sides a little bit more again where my fingers touch the embossing powder and removed it and then heat set the other half of the moon and making sure that I don't burn my fingers in this process. Now I'll hold the moon up to the camera a little bit better so you can see that beautiful silver embossing. I just think this is a nice little detail and it also uh, brings in a little bit more that heat embossing that we did on the sentiment. kind of incorporates it more throughout the card design. So now we've made all our elements and we're ready to put together our shaker card. We've got our two die cuts of uh, stars. I did die cut that star strip twice because I'm going to adhere it to the top and the bottom of this panel. I'm going to use Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Adhesive here and adhere one of the strips to the back, uh, to the back but the top of the panel, and then I will adhere the bottom strip of stars to the bottom of the panel. This one's going to be a little trickier because the sentiment's there. I'm adhering most of the tall stars behind the sentiment area, but I will pop out one of the stars later and have it just kind of... Um, be visible from the front because I still want to see those stars and I like the details even though some of the stars you can't actually see because they're completely like one of the stars is going to be completely behind the panel but I still like the detail from the the that that strip of cardstock that's holding the star together I just think that's a nice way to break up the panel a little bit too so here I'm popping out one of those stars pop having it sit on the front and I'm just going to do a little dab of glue here and stick it down. I consider I have a star over there. I just grabbed it right now. Another die cut star that I was considering putting on the front as well. But I decided to just, because I already have one just to the left there, a little star. I decided to just forego it. So I put that aside. Now I have one single strip with a, a small star. I'm going to add that to the top here. This was die cut um, in the lower portion when I die cut the panel. And I'm just going to use a little bit more liquid glue, hold it in place, and then snip off the excess. And that will complete my panel, my front panel. I'm now going to grab my piece of acetate here and this acetate is great. It is already cut to an A2 panel size, so it is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna use some more of my Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Adhesive here and place it all over the back side of my front panel. I'm being, I'm even going to place it on the back of those stars there. I am being very careful with my glue usage. I don't want too much glue because I don't want it to, when I stick down the acetate, I don't want it to kind of squish out from behind the die cut and then be visible on the front of the card. So that's the thing you want to just be careful of. And even when I get a, when I get a little too much glue, I'll use my finger and kind of um, grab some of that glue, pick some of that glue up with my fingertip uh, just to remove if any of the excess because I definitely don't want globs of glue to be visible from the front of the card. And now I'm just sticking my acetate directly on to the the die cut and I will glue down a little bit 
better these some of these front stars that didn't quite get enough glue on them and stick them down and hold them just for a second here to make sure they stick and I'm going to keep that little piece of parchment behind the acetate just for a little while just to protect it while it's kind of drying and I'm working on the other parts of the shaker card uh, just to make sure I don't get if I have any glue on my work surface that it doesn't get to the get on the back side of the acetate so now I have our two layers of craft foam. I still have that inside negative piece in there and I'm going to apply glue just to the frame part of my die cut and then stick it down onto the striped background piece. While that's drying just a bit, I'm going to adhere my moon to onto the acetate of my front panel. Again, using some more of my Tombow Mono Multi-Liquid Adhesive. I really do like this glue for um, surfaces, like different surfaces than cardstock. I use it for cardstock as well, but it works well for um, acetate and craft foam. So I use that quite frequently for shaker cards. Now I'm going to finally remove that inside section. And again, we kept it in there the whole time just to make sure we keep all the corners of our frame 90 degrees so everything's nice and straight and square and this foam frame will be the well for all our shaker components so that's what we're going to add next most of the shaker components i'm using today are from little things from lucy's cards these beautiful colorful stars were actually the inspiration for the background and they are called star bright sprinkles i'm also going to use these beautiful crystals they are called dewdrop diamonds so some really pretty things that i'm adding to the shaker card i'll finish up i'll finish up the contents with some silver sequins so just some silver sequins just again to bring in that silver that we have on the moon and a sentiment now that i have my well all filled with my shaker contents i'm going to take some more liquid glue here and add it to the the craft foam frame and then i will pop on my front panel i'll make sure the corners are all lined up here and then i will take a die cutting plate and place it on top just to give it a little bit of pressure while it dries now that it's dry i'll remove the plate and we have to now add this shaker front to an actual card base so i have an a2 top folding card base here and i'm going to again use some more liquid glue just apply it to the card front and then pop on the shaker panel and that will complete the card i'll hold it up here to the camera so you can see all the sparkly shiny goodness contained inside this shaker card I love the colors in this. I think it's a great spin on the traditional kind of moon and stars look instead of doing the classic gold and dark blues. We went, I went for a very colorful look and I think it pairs perfectly with the sentiment and this would make a great welcome baby card. I love how this would also work for if you don't know the gender of the baby and this could even work for just um, like an I love you card as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video tutorial. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit waffleflower.com and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching.